Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about things to consider before buying a BMW Z4. I, I just wanted to impart some of my kind of wisdom and learning experience of buying an E85 Z4, owning it almost nine months now. I just wanted to run over a couple of things that you can, can need to consider that maybe I didn't consider and things that I did kind of consider that led me to the purchasing an E85 Z4. So stay tuned for this video. Consider is cost. Um, we can ignore, well, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to kind of ignore the outright cost of purchasing the car because for about a five grand budget, in the UK anyway, you can get a bunch of two seat uh, manual cars, things like the Honda S2000, Nissan 370Z, the Mark 1 Porsche Boxster, which is getting the Friday Headlight 1990s one, um, the Audi TT Mark 1, etc. etc. Um, the main thing I wanted to kind of focus on was probably the maintenance of these types of cars relative to the current value. Um, so things you should consider that I've recently replaced the alternator and battery in this exact BMW Z4 just before Christmas there. That cost myself just over £400. Bear in mind this car is probably worth about £3,000, £3,200 current market value. Uh, it's got about 106,000 miles. Uh, it's got heated seats and upgraded alloy wheels. But not a great deal of extras on it, especially compared to like a modern car. Nothing like sat nav or lane departure warning or anything like that. Um, and the real question is, is it worth it? Truthfully, no, but it hurts because you, you kind of think, well, it's over like probably 10% value, probably 15% value of the car you spent in one maintenance bill. If you watched my previous video to this, it's kind of the running costs I spent over the past eight, nine months since I bought the car in last May in 2018, how much the car's cost. Uh, I'll leave the link for that below. But yeah, so what originally kind of led me to buying this E85 compared to like something maybe as prestigious as like a Porsche Boxster um, It's probably the cost of parts um, A Porsche Boxster, I've watched a couple of videos, as like Scott Kilmore um, has mentioned it previously that when you have to replace something in the Porsche because it's mid in a lot of the time you have to take the engine out or back the engine out and it's a bit more difficult to work on Being the BMW, you've got the engine in the front, pop the bonnet up and you've kind of got easy access I thought the labour cost would be a bit lower um, Also I knew a guy, uh, Johnny, who I bought, well, bought my BMW 1Cs from a dealership but I had the BMW serviced and had bits and bobs done there because he's an independent so kind of felt a bit more comfortable with the BMW. Having had a E30 before as well, we got the Z4, I've had two BMWs before, I thought kind of staying within the brand, nothing against like, the Honda or Nissan. Um, I just never really got around to looking into them seriously although I do like the kind of burnt orange colour of the 370Z. So that's something to consider, again the parts cost themselves, BMW Z4s were mass produced, especially in comparison to the Porsche box oil, that's a mass produced for a Boxster, the Z4 was more commonly sold, a bit like your SLKs and your Audi TTs and things like that, so parts are a bit more readily available at this age and stage in the game, with the cars being out say 15, 17 years, depending on the age of your car, loads of parts out there, you might be lucky going to like a scrap heap, picking up don't know if you need a rear bumper or body work or if you need a component, something like that. Loads of parts on the forum, the Z4 forum. Um, things like eBay are also great for getting bits and bobs you might need. I'm um, just trying to think what I've got like the real centre hubcaps, um, the badge emblems. Got that for this car um, when I first got it because they were disastrous. Something I would consider is probably getting the badges done, but uh, that's just cosmetic. As I said, please check the video before for the total running costs that cost me personally for this particular 2.5 litre E85. Another thing I want you guys to consider is the E85 road noise, suspension and ride quality. I'm not like saying you're going to expect Rolls Royce levels of comfort or sound insulation or the most luxurious rides or the best dynamic ride quality compared to like something like a Porsche or something high performance. It is what it is, it is like a 15 year old two seater car. However, I just wanted to bring it up as road noise is really bad, especially at motorway speeds. This particular car anyway, although there's no holes in the roof or anything like that, you just still feel you hear the wind noise around the gaps. The windows are frameless, so that may allow a little bit of air through. You can probably hear the cars driving past at the moment. So there's just things like that to consider. You wouldn't really expect this car to be as quiet as like a hard top um, modern car like my mum's 5 Series there or my Golf. 
I just can't really compete being A the age and being, being a fabric roof. Um, obviously people are going to comment, maybe you're going to comment on the new Bentley Continental Convertible or like something like the Rolls Royce Phantom drop head might be ultra quiet but they've probably got like a lot more layers of insulation and they're a lot newer. Just again due to the age of the car, it is triple layered insulation here so it is relatively warm, keeps the heat in compared to like a Mazda MX-5 that I've been in once for. It's kind of got a very thin layer of interior that you've actually got quite thick lining here so again this is a premium car when it's first out you kind of maybe expect that so that, there's a positive going for it anyway for maybe the heat insulation in comparison to something else but something else to consider is the road noise. For my own personal comparison the only other convertible I've driven really is the Lamborghini Huracan which was in 2016 which is the spider one which in no way is comparable to the Z4 however it's the only convertible I had and the windscreen was like <laughs> there when the roof down your top of my head's brushing in the wind whereas I can sit comfortably here you've got still got a good couple of inches of headroom so I just wanted to point that out um, as a bit of fun like when, for my own personal comparison maybe you guys are the same you've done a track day or something like that Z4 is not just quite the same as a more modern supercar even so also the things to consider is the driving dynamics of this car being hydraulically having hydraulic steering even you've got a lot bit more weight to it which means it's a bit more engaging in comparison to a normal uh, modern day car be that I've not driven obviously the new G Series Z4 but say something like I'm gonna compare it to like my golf I'm driving at the moment the Golf GTD and like the new 5 series again all these kind of cars are all electronic assisted just while I was reversing there uh, this particular car doesn't have parking sensors, <laughs> something else to consider would be the age of the car and the kind of tech you'd get. Heated seats I think were a luxury back in 2005 when this car was new. I'd definitely consider looking at the spec, or the spec sensitive especially as you go up. Now you can get an example of the wind noise as we're driving along, pretty quiet for sound. Another thing to consider is the road noise and the vibrations. Um, this car rattles like hell and earth I would say. Um, it's a lot better with the roof down because you've got the wind in your hair. But I've not had the roof down in this car in a good few months, just primarily to the snow. It's actually snowing today and it's midwinter in Scotland. So I would just point that out. Uh, this door since I've got it vibrates like nothing. I've been to the garage twice with it. They've pulled it apart, put it back together had the dual lock mechanism looked at um, and it still rattles around within its little confined little pin that pops up and down to lock the car rattles when it's up or down so it's really annoying which again you don't get that in a modern car A a modern car is probably better built and B nowadays it's like a light you get so you're not actually having a physical thing to vibrate and also I want to point out where I mentioned it's probably the first snow we I've had of 2019. Sorry about the camera vibrating away there. Another thing to consider is the windscreen wipers. They are very squeaky, very flat, and I have had them replaced recently, so that's just how they are designed. They're not the clearest, they just smear a little bit in the glass. And I can, this is another thing to consider again, just the age. They're not as smooth operating, they're quite noisy. They're hinged above the bonnet line as well, so for aerodynamics and things like that, you've not got the same as like a modern day car when they're built just below the bonnet line to let your air flow over. Sorry about the camera vibrating <laughs> flying around there. Not exactly that harsh. And I'm in no way putting a negative damper on the Z4. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. This particular um, Titan Silver um, Z4, not this exact model, but the, there was a Titan Silver model in the movie Stormtrooper back in 2005-2006 like Alex Pettifeller was the actor in it if you ever read the books they were great back in the day when we were growing up and I remember this car driving along these kind of country roads when at the beginning of the movie that he was like this um, MI5, MI6 agent this is his bad guy car and almost like it's a poor man's double sevens Aston Martin um, so the Z4 does have a little bit of movie homage um, to something else. You can consider a slash brag your lights too. And yes, people might say, oh, the Toyota Supra is in Fast and Furious, and yes, that's probably better. 
franchise to get get into in the better bragging rights, but if you think uh, to Audi TT really has Mission Impossible 1, I'm trying to think that it's okay, so I think it's been in anything. So another thing to consider is the acceleration. Great fun to drive. Another thing to consider if you're obviously short -list shortlisting the Z4. Look at the smile on this face. I've had this eight months, and again, every day you get into it, it gives you a bit of that smile. Woohoo! <laughs> so it'll only be a two and a half litre. This is 190 horsepower. It might not be as fast as a three litre Z4. Uh, if you want to check something that out, I recommend checking out a channel called It's Joel. Uh, Joel's got a black. 85 uh, 3 litre Z4 and that's some beast. Uh, I think it's got about 230, 240 horsepower, so a lot, about 30 or 40 or more horsepower than this particular car. But for my needs, uh, it's been a lot bit cheaper than a 3 litre. It's still got the manual gearbox, you're still having a six cylinder engine, you've got the noise, you've got the fun, you've just got a slightly cheaper entry point into the Z4 range. Um, again, I think the Mills and Regal are very similar. It's another thing to consider is the fuel cost of this car. Right now you're seeing the suspension, how harsh it is. It is incredibly hard, especially in comparison to anything modern. I'd say anything post 2010. Talking, could be an S5, I've been on like sporty cars, and like, I don't think of anything comparable. Um, the only thing I can think is my friend's got a Renault Twingo Cup that I was recently in, and that was really harsh riding. I think it was about 2010, but apart from that, um, <laughs> this car is one of the stiffest cars I've been in. So the last thing I wanted you guys to consider is really the feasibility of a two-door, two-seater car. Um, if you're looking for one of these, hopefully you know that's what they are. They've not got rear seats, uh, the storage is very minimum. Cup holders were even an option extra back in the day, so I may he's in practicality or well managed in a car like this. The boot size is fine, uh, enough to carry like a weekend bag or a gym bag or something like that, but I do, this is really an ideal second car possibly here for the weekend. Um, is what I bought it for. Uh, when I first got this car, actually, it was my third car um, for the weekends, and I'd use it for the car events and enjoying this <laughs> this summer when the sun's out in Scotland. Um, but if you're looking for a two-seat sports car on a budget with a good sounding engine, BMWs are known for a six-cylinder engine, especially the high running cost of the car, then I don't see why you shouldn't shortlist the E85Z4. I just want to say thanks very much for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it informative, or if you get any other comments, please comment below. Give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel as I'm trying to grow this channel. Uh, check out my Instagram, at BeamerTom also, and if you feel like it, I've also got an Instagram and Facebook called Cars of Glasgow, which I've got the sticker on the front of the car there. So, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Ciao!